count once I've already done it. All right, so to those of you playing at home, our warm-up was converting these exponential values to radical values. Please pause the video and try it, because in about t minus three seconds, I'm going to show you our answers. And two and one, and there we go. So d to the one-eighth to the fifth comes out to be the eighth root of d to the fifth. k to the negative one-sixth. We said it might be this, and then we broke it up to look at is it for sure 1 over the 6th root of k, and it is. Similarly, the next one comes out to be 1 over the ninth root of v. Sorry, that's a little bit hard to read there. We tested a value for z to see is z to the 2 tenth equal to z to the 1 fifth, and it is. So we said that's allowed to be the 5th root of z, which tells us it must also be equal to that, but this is a lot more complicated to write. And then any uh, like decimal value that is greater than 1, we can write as an improper fraction and deal with it that way. And then I got made fun of for how I make my 7s and had to defend myself, and that was that. <laughs> you guys are great. Well, if you're going to write 7s that way, it's going to take longer to write 7s the normal way that I would write, it's going to take less time. What? Like, if you write it like, if you write it like this way, it's going to take oh, a long time. Oh, the, the how long way. the seven? I don't care how long things take me. i got to be able to read it. Here's the thing. If you can't read your own handwriting, it's going to take you longer. Right? So I started making my sevens like that and my ones the way that I do so that I can read my own handwriting. Please write this down. This is the first problem that I want you to challenge yourself with. And then you're going to be like, oh, this isn't that hard. And I promise you. I'm going to throw some very difficult problems at you today. So essentially they're saying if these are equal. They're saying what is the value of a when we rewrite 4 to the 31st, 4 to the power of 31x as a to the x? Who would like to explain this? I'm hearing like half of what you're saying, because I couldn't tell if you were trying to answer for the class, because you're kind of talking quietly. <sighs> you, like, a little bit of my heart gets broken off every time you say, just, oh, never mind. Like, anybody? This is a to the power of x. Oh, well, all I was writing was a to the power of x. Maybe it's on purpose that you can't see what I'm doing. Maybe I don't want to be made fun of. So, A is raised to... I, I could put A in parentheses if I want. So, the some value is being raised to X and ends up being equal to 4 to the 31st X. Now, 31X is really 31 times X. Right? So, if this is multiplication, Avi, how do we end up with multiplication in a power? A power to a power. So at some point, 4 to the 31st was raised to the... Uh, oh, that makes sense. 4 to the 31st was raised to the power of x, which would result in 4 to the 31x. I know I keep writing like the same thing over again. But what that means is this 4 to the 31st must be our value of a. The thing being raised to the x, the thing being raised to the x, or really multiplied to the power of x, because we know how you end up with multiplication in a power is raising powers to a power. Any questions on that one? Because you know I'm about to click slides and tell you to do it on your own. Click it real good. You're sad, I'm sorry. Who who recognizes what somebody who thinks they're clever did here? Uh, 3.14159. Uh, it's pi. I'm, t I'm not the only math person that does like silly things like that. I didn't write that problem, I copied it. What'd you say, L? Who what? 
Oh, yeah, that's for Alina. I was waiting to see if she would notice it. Oh, up at the top of the page. Now, that is a great question. Yeah. If it asked you, what is the value of A in exponential form, leave it to the exponent. But you make a really good point of, if they just asked us, what is A? Well, okay, if I try to think through, what is 3.14 to the 159? Huh, huh, hmm. <laughs> ah, scientific notation is going to be involved here. So A we could either say is 3.14 to the 159 or a is equal to the 1.2 crap 0 to 7 5 uh, I'm going to round 8 times 10 to the 79th power <laughs> so i'm thinking exponential form is probably okay when something is raised to the 159th power, <laughs> yeah, it's a little insane. Now, why do we care about exponents, right? What we're heading towards is modeling using exponential information. So if we talk about like carbon decay, you guys talked about carbon decay in science before? Why do we care about carbon decay? Anyone know? That's an easy, that's like a... Any question a teacher says, because it's important. Um, because Sorry, somebody, Avi or Kaylin, somebody said something from over there. I don't want to just breeze yeah, over what, it. What is decay? I, well, that's a great question. What's carbon decay? Amar? Uh, Anyone ever heard of carbon dating? So, every element, okay, I might be... Uh, asterisks here. I might be talking beyond what I understand, so people on the internet don't at me. I'm, I probably am making this stuff up. Every element, I'm just waiting for like, you know, Ellie or somebody to be like, oh, you're wrong. I googled this while I was watching your video. Um, has a half-life. A half-life is literally the span of time that it takes that element, that thing, to decay to half of what it was. So, if I say Fukushima, do you guys know what I'm talking about? No. It was a, uh, uh, close. Um, it, there was a, um, radioactive, like, an energy plant, like a power plant. Don't know why oh, my yeah, brain doesn't work. That's the tsunami thing? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, when a tsunami happened, like, the plant essentially, like, had a meltdown, and the whole place is radioactive now. Oh, and yeah. now dumb because 2020 needs anything else bad to happen they're talking about dumping the water that has been sitting there since the like thing happened they're talking about dumping that water back out into the ocean now obviously you know your face is described this is a bad idea yes. but what might be behind it now i think it's a bad idea what might be behind it is how long has it been sitting there how much has the radiation decayed and is it still a dangerous amount of radiation? Now, my opinion is any radiation is probably bad. Um, but that... Dr. Stone? I have not. I'm sorry, I don't have much time to watch TV. Currently, I'm just trying to watch Qu Queen's Gambit, which is a Netflix show about chess, but I don't get much TV time. Less never mind. I'll take that as a compliment, Alina. I'll finish that sentence in my head and take it as a compliment. So, oh, well, this is just another one. So I had a few of these practice problems. Um, but when we talk about, like, exponential problems, that's why. That's what we're working towards, guys, is so that you, when you're out in the real world, like, out in the real world, I hate that statement. But when you're out, like, working a job, that's a much nicer thing to say than out in the real world, because you guys live in the real world right now. When you're out working a job and you're doing math to make money, exponentials are often involved especially when we're talking about things decaying. So this, we could do another one of those and another one. Now, this gets a bit interesting, where if they wanted us to put this in exponential form but not using the negative, we need to be careful and say, remember, the negative flips the entire base. 
So let's try this one really quickly, just to make sure that we're comfortable with it. Wouldn't it just be what? Ooh, but A would just be 3 to the ninth, right? Yeah. yeah. So literally here, A would be 3 to the ninth. Do you know what 3 to the ninth is? Uh, I guarantee you don't. It's 19,683. Only because I have my calculator. So now that you guys are probably getting to that point of like, well, this isn't that hard. And class is almost over. Dang it. We only have like four minutes for real. This is what we're heading towards. Find the expression for f, or f of x, that makes the following equation. Please write this down. 9 to the x. This is the last problem we're going to do because we only have like five minutes. 9 to the x times 3 to the x plus 2. Now, back in Math 8, maybe Math 1, I mean, I put on deodorant this morning. You're right. This is pretty gross. Now, back in Math 8 or Math 1, I forget which, we talked about how we can, like, combine values raised to exponents. And there's one very particular rule that has to be met that in my brain is pretty similar to common denominators. Anyone remember what that rule when dealing with exponential expressions is? Kind of like common denominators, but it's not. It's common something else. Thank you. We need common bases. Don't worry, even if I had this up, you wouldn't have been able to see what I was writing. We need common bases. Now, our bases are the things being raised to the powers. It is always... Sorry, you cleared your throat and now you're staring at me and it makes me nervous. We always find it easier to go down in our bases. So if I wanted to turn 9 into a base of 3... What can I turn 9 into? 3 squared. Thank you. So base, So this is really 3 squared to the x. Literally, I'm replacing the 9. Times 3 to the x plus 2. And now that we have common bases, what, oh, well, this is really 3 to the 2x, right? What is an exponent times another exponent? When we have the common bases, what do I do with the exponents? Yeah, multiplication is actually addition. So this becomes 3 to the 2x plus x plus 2. You guys with me? I got some people not writing, and I really doubt that we knew this before we came to class. That gives us 3 to the 3x plus 2, which means that's, yeah, that's what f of x is. So f of x is 3x plus 2. In order to solve these like uh, exponential equations, really, because there's an equal involved here, but in order to solve these exponential expression problems, you want to make the same bases, that common base, and then be able to compare the powers with each other. All right. Yeah. I saw that happen. I will assign next week's batch of homework right now. Yay! Whoa! Oh, learn storm. Yeah.
I was about to say, don't tell me that you're going to do my work during another teacher's class. That's no, like, I'm supposed to care about here, that. Yeah. Here Check my progress. All right, here we go. We're at 32. You are. You are the highest level class I have. Hey, closer to Disney World it's it's uh the unit rate is the same so it's three assignments per person is a level the, like no matter how big the class is all right we're keeping on going keeping on going Um, eighth grade percussion people. I know it's blue group, but it's Juan and Luke. Who's in band? I, it's Juan and Luke, isn't it? And Phoebe. Yeah, Phoebe's the Green Day percussionist, but Juan and Luke are Blue Day percussion, right? Yeah. I know this is a totally random question, but. You guys think we got 35? Yeah. If you do, you get candy. I think I could eat like 30 candy myself. If you want a little 100, what are you doing, right? No. Yeah. 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 Yeah.